Dexter Gordon was able to make all of his solos sound incredible by utilising a surprisingly simple formula. And if you can understand this formula, you're going to be able to make your solos sound fluid, imaginative, and more and more like the jazz greats. The first part of this formula is using really clear melodic hooks. So many of us, when we're improvising, kind of have this constant stream of notes and ideas, and it just becomes this amorphous blob of music that's really hard to engage with both as a listener and the other musicians playing with you. And if there is space between your ideas, so often it doesn't really relate to the form. But Dexter starts pretty much every chorus off with a really clear, simple melodic hook. So even if you're not consciously following the form, you can still kind of hear it within his solo. Take his solo on the second balcony jump, for example. He starts off with a really clear bluesy hook. And then in the second chorus, he has a new hook. In chorus three, there's a new hook. This time it's a little bit more riffy. And by the fourth chorus, the solo's kind of reached the peak of its intensity, yet he still has a really clear melodic hook at the start, even if it is a little bit busier than the previous ones. And in between these hooks, there are some killer bop lines, but he still makes sure to come back to a hook at the start of each chorus. And this is kind of like splitting a book up into different chapters. It makes it far easier to digest and follow along with what's happening, and for Dexter as an improviser, it also gives him some different stuff to work with each chorus, rather than just having this constant stream of notes that doesn't go anywhere. Not that I've done that. Ever. But Dexter's formula goes way deeper than just these sort of structural aspects. His improvised lines rely really heavily on a small bank of four and five note cells, which he then staples together with scale passages, arpeggios, and that sort of thing. Now, there are 18 different cells in this formula, and Dexter uses all of them in a variety of different keys. But just to go through them all quickly, we're going to go through as if C is always the root of the chord. So strap yourself in as we go through all 18 from the most to the least used. Now, Dexter's most used cell is actually on a minor 7 chord, and he just comes down 5, 3, 2, 1. So we get... And then his next most is on dominant chords from the 7th. And another one from the 7th goes up to the flat 9. And that one really wants to go to chord 1, right? And then on a major chord, he'll kind of come down in thirds from the 5th. Or he'll do the classic 1, 2, 3, 5 shape. And on dominant chords again, he kind of does like a chromatic turn from the 5th going to that flat 13th. And on minor chords, he'll arpeggiate from the 3rd all the way to the 11th. And on dominant chords, he'll also do an arpeggio from the 3rd, but this time he'll hit the flat 9. Classic bebop. And from minor chords again, there's another little turn almost from the root of the chord. Or from the ninth, he might come down chromatically to the seventh. And then there's like a sliding chromatic run that we've all heard him play so much. And then there's like a misshapen arpeggio from the third of a minor chord. Or from the 5th of a major chord, he'll go... And then another one on major chords is just playing notes 1 and 5, and going up through the octaves. And then there's almost like a spooky one from the 9th of the minor 7 chord, which hits the major 7 on a minor 7 chord. And then on a dominant, he'll go up from the 3rd. which again, kind of wants to hit chord one, right? 
And then on a minor seven chord, he'll kind of do like a, a stacked fourths thing going from the minor third. So you get. And then on diminished chords, he'll do an absolutely classic bebop shape. For a full list of where Dexter uses these cells, check out my Diggin' Dexter ebook, link in the description. But one super clear example is bars 10 to 16 of his solo on Cheesecake. It's made up almost entirely from these cells. <laughs> So if I break that down, he starts off with some classic bebop language, an enclosure, an arpeggio shape, before a little twiddle on the G7, which takes him to one of those cells, another cell, another cell, and then there's like an arpeggio shape to take him to yet another cell. And then he's like, you know what? I'll play something new. I'll do a little walk up a scale. No, actually, one more cell. And you know, he's almost at the end of the phrase, right? So what's he gonna play? Two more cells. It's almost entirely those cells. Now, most of us have a few stock licks that we play quite often, and that concept isn't too dissimilar from this. But the big difference is that because licks are often quite a bit longer, they're more restricted in terms of the harmonic context you can use them in. You're going to struggle to play a rhythm changes lick over Stella by Starlight. <laughs> Because the cells are also small, Dexter is easily able to adapt them to whatever harmonic context he's in. Let's take his most used cell. Now normally that's played over a minor 7 chord, right? But without changing any of those notes, it'll also fit over the corresponding dominant chord. So just then we had it over a D minor 7, but it's also going to fit over a G7. And there it starts on the ninth, which gives it this juicy little bit of colour as well. And he does this all over the place. In bar 85 of his second balcony jump solo, he's on a C7 and plays two chord tones. Then it hits the ninth and starts that cell. And this kind of implies a 2-5 progression, right? Because that cell is so clearly the two chord. And because of that, we could also actually use it on a major 7 or a 1 chord and imply a whole 2-5 progression. So on a C major 7. But it even goes beyond that. Dexter uses these cells to get into more complicated harmonic areas. He uses this same cell we've been talking about, but from the flat 13th of a dominant chord in bar 48 of his solo on Willow Weep For Me. And by doing that, the cell naturally hits the flat 13th, the 3rd, the sharp 9, and then the flat 9. So we get... And hang on, now this really super simple cell has got us into this quite cool altered sound. And because all of his cells are really clear harmonically, he's able to do this same concept of reapplying them in different harmonic situations on pretty much all of them really easily. But the reliance on cells within Dexter's formula doesn't stop there. He'll also vary the rhythm of each of these individual cells, so that although he doesn't have to come up with brand new melodic ideas, he can keep everything sounding fresh and have some nice rhythmic variety within his solo. In bars 45 to 46 of his solo on Second Balcony Jump, he uses that same cell we've been talking about, but he adds in some syncopation to break it up, kind of disguise it a little bit and add in some rhythmic momentum. For a more thorough breakdown of all of this, check out my ebook Diggin' Dexter, 
which goes through all of these cells, how and where he uses them in his solos, along with breaking down his use of rhythm, harmony, and his other melodic techniques. But now that we know Dexter's formula, how can we benefit from it? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. Use it. Practice starting off each chorus of your solo with a really clear melodic hook. And practice using little melodic cells until they become part of your natural go-to musical vocabulary, and you can use them in a wide variety of harmonic contexts. And once you've got all that, your solos might start sounding something like this. Dexter Gordon's style, check out this video next.